Hey guys, Bud Cat 7 here. Okay, it is Monday, December 16, 2019. I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys, well, I figured while we were going through Alabama here on uh, looking at the quote unquote giants or large hominids, um, I read you this article I came across which I thought was relevant to the topic and, you know, I probably wouldn't hear about by reading um, these old uh, newspaper accounts and accounts from uh, greater ancestors, but this is an article from 2017 and it's very interesting here and it, it just totally relatable to all the research I've done up here in the Northeast with the stone walls and everything else. And in my last video, I was uh, mentioning my stone uh, serpent wall that I found that had scales and this wide open uh, triangular shaped rock stone that I sat in the middle of the mouth there. This is just more affirmations to this, this serpent culture, which is very common among Native American cultures, the serpent theme again and again. So, in any case, let's let's read what this article says because it's just extremely interesting and it's pretty recent. So, thousands of ancient stone mounds recently discovered in Alabama. Stone mounds, stone walls, stone snake effigies discovered in mountains near Jacksonville, Anniston, and Oxford, Alabama. Article appears in Alternate Perceptions magazine. Jacksonville, Alabama, June 2nd, 2017. Alabama is known for having one of the most important Native American Indian mound sites in the country. It is impressive mound, it is the impressive Moundville complex. We're going to talk about that a little bit too, I think. A sprawling 185 acre archaeological park with 29 huge flat top pyramid shaped mounds. Okay, so. Flat top pyramid shaped mounds would mean the temple mound builders and in the mainstream, the way they look at it, the temple mound builders came after the Adena and Hopewell, which they attribute a lot of these uh, large skeletal remains to. So these temple mound builders were from a later date, but they may or may not be associated with it because civilization lives up on top of civilization. That's how it is, but because they listen to what they say. So in any case, it was constructed and utilized between A.D. 1000 and 1400, so keep that in mind. All right, but here in this next paragraph, you should mention this. While Mound Hill represents the most impressive archaeological site in the state, Alabama had a Native American mound building culture that constructed hundreds of sites and thousands of mounds starting as early as 5,000 years ago. Okay, so that's more in line of this saying 5,000 years ago. Well, it very could likely be that our stone walls up here in the Northeast are somewhere around that age as well, or even earlier because of all the Neolithic constructions up there. You see what I'm saying? Surprisingly, some of the more mysterious mound sites are only now being found, okay? So they're only now being found, all right? Okay, after, you know, 200 and something years in this country, they're finally being found now in the 21st century, okay? So it just shows you how neglected American archaeology and archaeology in general in the Americas, you know, maybe not so much in South America, but certainly in North America, highly neglected because of all the jerks who were in positions in power, like at the Bureau of Ethnology with Alice Herdlishka, for example, who screwed it all up. I have a video about that on my channel. That jerk. Recent discoveries and investigations by archaeologists have revealed thousands of ancient stone mounds and odd 
linear stone walls in the mountains around Jacksonville, Anniston, and Oxford in, in Alabama. Okay, so they're odd linear stone walls. So, you know, what does that remind me of? Something, I don't know. Stone wall research, maybe? I don't know. Something like that. The first reports and investigation on these stone structures began in the 1980s with the survey of the Morgan Mountain Stone Mountain Complex, east of what was then the active base of Fort McClellan. Dr. Harry Holstein, professor of archaeology at Jacksonville State University, reported in 1989 that the Morgan site consisted of five large stone mounds running in a linear fashion on the summit of the mountain. Examination of the mounds revealed artifacts indicating that the mounds were of Native American construction. Okay, so when they find these things and they're... They have to be positive that they're not secondary burials themselves, okay? Just because things are buried there, they attribute it immediately because of the ancient, how ancient these things are. You have to be certain of those things. But no matter what, it's, of course it's Native American construction. These are the ancestors of the Native Americans, including all of these large hominids. In 2003, Holstein began investigating a site on a nearby Chuckaloco mountain chain that was discovered by a new landowner. At this sprawling complex, Holstein's team initially found 79 conical stone mounds, one horseshoe-shaped mound, 31 linear walls, and a serpent-like stone wall. In 2007, Holstein's team concluded that the stone mounds and walls were likely constructed by prehistoric woodland Indians as memorials to deceased individuals. Well, that's all a matter of interpretation, okay? Some of these things had multiple functions, okay? Things have multiple functions, multiple meanings. It's not often not one specific thing or another, okay? And it's all a matter of interpretation anyway, okay? Certainly, it was of a ceremonial, spiritual nature because you have the serpent theme. I mean, that's the thing that sticks out in my mind the most. I don't know about anybody else who's done research in archaeology and anthropology and read reams of books like I have, but it seems to me that the majority of Native Americans in whatever hemisphere it is, seem to be serpent-related mythologies and worship going on in all of these cultures. Okay, so it's just a repeated theme. It's certainly up here with these stone mounds in uh, the New England area and Lower Canada and uh, everywhere else around here and all up and down the east coast apparently in areas in small batches in other places but seem to be concentrated heavily in the New England area and New York most prominently most prominently has the most stone walls of any other state and the aboriginal ones we're talking about in 2010, Holstein issued a report on another stone mound complex in the area, the Morton Hill Stone Structure Complex, located on the grounds of what was for, once Fort McClellan. It is a widespread complex of a couple of hundred stone mounds and dozens of linear walls. In addition, several large stone-formed effigies of snakes were found in the region, along with nearly a dozen other stone mound complexes. Holstein asserts that the purposes of the stone mounds and walls were related to ancient spiritual beliefs and burial practices. Well, there's certainly spiritual beliefs and, you know, maybe burial practices, but 
a lot of these areas could have been administrative areas because then he's not associating the level and complexity in the organization of these societies with anything else other than these certain things here. But it seems odd to me that they build anything that wasn't of some practical use and not just to look at, okay? No doubt, he's right about that, but, you know, without a closer look at all these linear walls that he's talking about, you know, I have to look at it from my industrial design training to see what they're really about, okay? So, because you have to make sense of these things. In 2017, the author of the just-published Native American Mounds in Alabama, Dr. Gregory Little, toured the Stone Mound sites with Holstein. During the tour of the sites, Holstein related that the mountains around Jacksonville and Anniston likely have thousands more undiscovered mounds. Maps of the sites, color photos, and detailed descriptions of these and other mounds in Alabama are found in a new book which features 46 mound and museum sites in Alabama. Dr. Little is the author of the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Native American Indian Mounds and Earthworks, which has had its second and revised edi edition issued in 2016. So, very, very interesting to me uh, about these stone walls, these linear stone walls, and these sites with stone mounds. These are not earthen mounds, these are stone mounds. So, that says something entirely different to me. I don't know if has anything to do with burial practices, but... Again, you have to take whatever mainstream says with a grain of salt. <clears throat> and as far as the um, the Moundville complex, there's something very interesting about that. There was this movie, uh, in the indie movie that was made called A Genesis Found. And I just read this little caption here, and I won't get into it much here, but just I found it's very interesting, and again, it's on a number of levels, but... A Genesis fan. In 1938, John Patterson found the key to our darkest secret. It's about to be found again. In 1938, John Patton Jr. found the key to our darkest secret. An anomalous skeleton, neither animal nor man. Uncertain of its implications, Patton hid the discovery away from the world through his never, ne though never forgetting what he found. Seventy years later, his grandson, Gardner, is forced to come to terms with his grandfather's past. A man he never knew, but in whose footsteps he inevitably followed when his cousin, controversial documentarian Bart Thompson, arrives. They go and they dig around and they find these unusually look, looking large skeletal remains with unusual skulls. And immediately what they jump to is the Nephilim. So this is one of these stories about, you know, Bible and God and Nephilim and the Nephilim Chronicles. You know, this is, his grandfather was on a, one of these CWA, you know, during the Roosevelt's time, one of these uh, workforce programs, you know, around the country and they were digging into the mounds or whatever and they found these weird skeletons that they couldn't figure out. and. This is what the film is about. So it's one of these Nephilim threads that they go on here. And, it, you know, obviously that's what their mindset is and not just species of other large hominid creatures that came from the ancient past and who knows how far ancient that might be. So I just found it very interesting. You see some trailers and stuff on YouTube, a Genesis found, you know, Genesis referring to the Bible and giants and all that kind of stuff. So it's this indie movie about it, about this weird skeleton that's neither, you know, man or, you know, animal. So, but <clears throat> again, this article is about more even ancient stone works found in Alabama, these thousands of stone mounds linear walls, 
snake effigies again the serpent culture again as i say all the um walls in the northeast are serpents or snakes their effigies are built into the walls over and over again as i show in my videos on my channel so anyway guys i just wanted to show you um that article I'll read to you that article just found out very very interesting these ancient stone built mounds with these walls and effigies in alabama I just so relatable to the culture up here in the northeast in new york and new england don't you think anyway guys i thought you might find that interesting all right so anyway bugcat7 signing out peace